Hello everyone, my name is Azatru, how are you? And welcome to another Star Wars Squadrons news update video. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the patch notes for the biggest update ever to Star Wars Squadrons. It contains nearly 300 changes and fixes, and it's live right now on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, so you can go download it and check out all of these changes for yourself. But I'm going to read out the long list of features and changes because there is plenty of stuff in here that the community has wanted, and it's probably going to make the game a lot better. So to kick things off, they've added a brand new Fleet Battles feature called the Forfeit System, and this replaces the old Safe to Leave and Match Not Scored system. So basically, this will allow players that felt like they were robbed of wins or locked into pointless matches and unrewarded for their time being able to have a better experience. So it puts control back into the player's hands and it allows players to decide what matches are worth fighting for until the end. So for example, if they're very close or if you want to forfeit the game because you're being absolutely steamrolled. In either case, players will now be fully rewarded on all sides. So players that defeat opponents through natural play or forfeit will now gain full points and progression rewards. As for players that lose naturally after a teammate abandons or lose by forfeits, they will still gain full progression rewards and only take half the skill point losses. A timer prevents the briefing room and hangar from persisting forever. In the case that the backfill option brand new to this update cannot be found within the time limit, the server will close and players will be returned back to the main menu without penalty. However, players that leave the briefing room and hangar before the timer expires will receive a lever penalty. And this is nowhere near as severe as leaving when you have deployed into the map, but there is still something there. And if you do want to lift penalties, you can lift them by completing full matches and not leaving them, of course. Now, they have made some balance changes to the TIE Bomber specifically. So the TIE Bomber's default hull has been decreased from 2,500 to 2,000, and the reinforced hull benefit is decreased to 50% instead of 60%. So this is going to make the TIE Bombers a lot less of a tank, and hopefully that makes the game better in terms of balance. They've also made some changes to capital ships to stop people from going up behind them and just slowing right down and focusing their fire. For example, people would do this with the Imperial Star Destroyer's shield generators. So what they've done is that the capital ship turrets are now much deadlier against players that are slow or close to capital ships and less deadlier against players that are faster and further out, which is hopefully going to be a really good change. And they've also changed the morale values for AI Starfighters. So AI Starfighter paths have been repositioned in every single map, but the gains have been changed. So when you're on the attack, you only gain one morale per AI. And when you're on the defense, you gain four morale when on the defense. Flagship turrets are much more aggressive when being attacked out of phase as well. And there is also a whole host of fixes regarding clipping and the Raider, the CR-90, and just a lot of good changes and fixes for fleet battles, which is awesome to hear. And that doesn't even include the career challenge and control fixes they've implemented here. You can just see how many they've done to the HOTAS system and controllers, along with stats and stuff like that. They've made some improvements to dogfights. So on Esla specifically, they've made the spawn points better, so it helps players feel less separated from the fight when respawning, which is awesome. That is something I felt that ever since the alpha, the game mode on that map just felt too far apart. As for the practice mode, they've made additional obstacle courses for players to test their skills. And they've also fixed a bunch of issues regarding as well, from clipping to sound effects and just overall stability. The spectator mode along with social has had a bunch of changes as well, which you can see right here. There is just so many changes in this update, which is awesome to see. And it shows that Motive are committed to making sure this game is as stable as possible and good for this community. But it doesn't stop there. A bunch of issues plaguing the story mode, specifically on missions like 11 and 9, have been changed and fixed. They've also made a bunch of fixes to the UI, along with adding the ability to turn off all tutorials. 
VR also gets a bunch of fixes as well to end this huge patch. This is patch 2.0 and it's the biggest one we've seen. Let me know down in the comment section your opinions on this update. What are you most excited for? I'm personally excited for the changes to the capital ship stuff and fleet battles changes to make it a lot more balanced in terms of playing. And if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe for more Star Wars Squadrons videos and drop a like to support my channel. Check out any of the two previous videos on the screen if you didn't miss them. And that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in my next Star Wars Squadrons video. Goodbye.